We turn to Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, and uh, we're in verse, somebody mark it, 17, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, all right, Re 21, 21, okay, Revelation chapter verse 21 and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not now I did we go over those verses on Jezebel in the Old Testament did we go across the verses of Jezebel in the Old Testament that's in verse 20 did we go across those verses anybody mark them Okay, let's let's go across some verses then. Uh, take your Bible and turn to uh, turn to the uh, let's uh, turn to the book of uh, let's begin with uh, uh, Judges. Turn to the book of Judges and turn to Judges chapter seventeen. Judges chapter seventeen connected with uh, this woman Jezebel, and he gave her space to repent. And, uh, and the reason why it's given Jezebel's given here, because she's connected with Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Uh, but let's turn to the book of Numbers, I mean the Judges, uh, Joshua, Judges, and turn to Judges chapter 17. And we're going to study Jezebel and her religion because she's connected with Revelation chapter 17 and 18. So you need to uh, take some notes and write some things down now as we uh, study Judges chapter 17. Uh, verse 1, And there was a man of Mount Ephraim. So underline the word Ephraim. And Ephraim is one of the tribes that's not mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. Now uh, hold your hand right there a minute. <clears throat> this is one of the reasons why. Uh, the tribe of Ephraim is missing in the chronology of Revelation chapter 7. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 7. And uh, in the margin of your Bible, you should write down in Revelation chapter 7, you should write down Judges chapter 17. All right, so uh, Ephraim is missing in the chronology of because Ephraim goes through the tribulation unprotected. You want to write that down. Ephraim goes through the tribulation unprotected. Now, uh, Judges chapter 17, verse 1. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, Taken, underline that in verse 2, taken from thee, evidently uh, he stole those 1,100 shekels from his mother, evidently. All right, taken from thee, about which thou cursed. Uh, evidently uh, somebody cursed, maybe she cursed when she found them gone. And spake of also in my ear, behold, the silver is with me. So he's owning up. He says he's got it. I took it. Well, he took it. All right. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. Strange thing to say, uh, if he stole those 1,100 shekels of silver from her, now he's returning it. All right. And when he had restored, under line in verse 3, and when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother. So he took them in verse 2 and then restores them in verse 3. All right. And his mother said, I had a wholly dedicated the silver to the Lord uh, from my hand for my son to make a graven image of molten image. Now, uh, what she did was break one of the Ten Commandments. So write down Exodus chapter 20. She breaks one of the Ten Commandments. So what does she do? 
she dedicates the silver, underline it, unto the Lord to make an image. To make this image. We're in Numbers chapter 17, verse 3. Number 17, 3. Now look at it. A graven image and a molten image. Now therefore I will restore it unto thee. Yea, he restored the money unto his mother. So he stole it, then he brings it back to her, and she dedicates it to the Lord to make a graven image. So this thing is a false imitation of a worship of the Lord. It's a, it's a hypocritical kind of deal. It's false. Now, uh, the rest of it. Uh, uh, give them to the founder. Underline the word founder in verse 4. Founder. So the founder is a fellow that's going to make this graven image out of these shekels of silver who made thereof a graven image and a molten image and they were in the house of Micah. So I'm going to let that because they're in the house. Now verse 5. And the man Micah had a house of gods. A house of gods. So you've got all these gods that he's made little images around his house and made a ephod. Now the ephod is that thing that's a breastplate over there on the priest that's, uh, uh, that the high priest has. So he, this is an imitation ephod that Mike has made. All right. And a teraphim, a T-E-R-A-P-H-I-M. That word occurs six times in scripture and it means a household god like an image of a man similar to the image of a man like a household god, a teraphim, and occurs six times. Uh, they have done a very similar thing. You might write it in the margin of the Bible. It's 1 Samuel 19, verse 12. 1 Samuel 19, 12. Very similar kind of thing. Same Hebrew word. And consecrated. Now, underline this. This is very important. One of his sons... So he has a house full of gods, and he has a false uh, 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 religious clothes, and uh, he has idols, and then he does something. He consecrates one of his own sons, who became, now watch this, became his priest. So that man has a younger son who is he calls the priest. Now verse 6. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man of Bethlehem of Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite. So underline in verse 7, a young man, and he's also a Levite. The Levites are those uh, priests. All the priests of, are of the tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi is nothing but priest. That's all they are. All right, Levites. And he sojourned there. And the men departed out of the city into Bethlehem and Judea and sojourned where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. And Micah said to him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem and Judea. And he go to journey where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me. And be unto me, now here's the word you want to underline, a what? A father. So here's a young man. Remember up in verse 7, he's called, he's a young man. And verse 7, so you want to underline in verse 10 and draw it back to the young man of verse 7. So Micah makes a young man a priest. So I'm going to verse unto me a father and a priest. So this thing of calling a priest father doesn't begin with the Roman Catholic Church. It goes all the way back there to uh, Judges chapter 17. Now anybody have a Schofield Bible? What's the date in Judges chapter 17? All right, 1406 B.C. You need to write that down in your Bible. 1406 B.C. Because a minute, you'll find out that this uh, thing that started here with the Ephraim and Dan goes all the way back to 1406 B.C. and stays with 
that tribe of Dan and Ephraim goes all the way to the captivity. So it goes all the way through. All right, now uh, let's pick up verse uh, 11, ver the rest of verse 10. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel and uh, victuals. So the Levite went in. And the Levite was continued to dwell with the man and the young man. There it is again in verse 11. Underline the word young man. So it goes back up to verse 7. A young man. And he's called a father and he's called a priest. All right. Was with him uh, as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite and the young man. There it is again. Become his priest. That thing begins way over there uh, in the Old Testament. And was in the house of Micah. Then said to Micah, Now uh, know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Now, unline in verse 13. Now know I that the Lord. So this fellow is professing to worship the Lord, and yet he has a bunch of idols, and he has a young man, and he has a, a man that he called a uh, father. All right. Now, underline in verse 13. To me, a priest. Verse 18. Now, in those days, there was no king in Israel. In those days, the tribe of Dan, Danites. Now, underline that. There in uh, verse 1 of 18.1. The Danites. So, again, in Revelation chapter 7, the tribe of Dan is not mentioned in the chronology. So write down in Revelation chapter 7. So take your Bible and turn back to Revelation chapter 7 and look at verse 4 again. For 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, the tribe of Dan is missing in the chronology. So there's two tribes missing, Ephraim and Dan. And the reason why is because of their sin of idolatry, of worshiping idols, worshiping idols that begins in Judges chapter 17 and 18. Now, uh, underline in verse 2, uh, Judges chapter 18, verse 2, and the children of Dan, underline that, there it is, circle it, and the children of Dan sent of their families five men from their coast, men of uh, Baal from Zer uh, Zorah and from Esiah, and spies out the land and search it. And they said unto, Go search the land, who, when you come unto uh, Ephraimite, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. So underline in verse uh, 3, they knew the voice of the young man of the Levite. Why? He'd been a priest. He'd been in the office of the Levite of the priest. They recognized his voice. He'd been... Uh, a priest of God. So this guy has been now switched from the priest of God over to the priest of worshiping these idols. What is his motive? His motive is he gets paid. He gets paid. All right. Now, verse, uh, uh, rest of verse 3. And they turned in thither and said to him, uh, Who brought thee hither? And what makest thou this place? And what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus is the dwelt Micah with me, and hath hired me, underline in verse 4, hired me. So he's, he's doing it because of the money. And I am his priest. I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God. See that thing? So they profess to be worshiping God, and this priest is actually God's priest, but he's left it, and he went to this idolatry thing, and he's called a father. So along come these five men from the tribe of Dan, and say, okay, uh, if you're a priest, we know you are, we recognize your voice, we heard you up there in the temple, okay, now pray to God for us. And we may know whether our way, whether we go, shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go ye in peace before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. So he tells them they're going to prosper. Go ahead and go. Everything can be okay. And he doesn't even know what he's talking about. This guy's been hired out for hire, and he doesn't. He, the Lord just left him alone. Verse 7. 
Then the five men departed and came to Lachish and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt uh, carelessly after the manner of the Zidonians, uh, quiet and scarce, and there was no uh, magistrate in the land that he might put them in shame in anything, and they were far from Zidonians and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren, the Zions and the Israels, and their brethren, and said unto them, What say? And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And they are still, but uh, not slothful, to go and to enter and to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto the people uh, scare, and to large land. For God hath given it into your hand, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. Okay, underline verse 10, For God hath given it into your hand. Uh, that guy's lying. He just he just walking out of out of the thin air. He doesn't. He's not getting this from the Lord. All right. Now verse eleven. And there went forth thence the family of Danites. Underline it. There it is. Dan out of Zion and out of the Israel. Six hundred men appointed with spears of war. And they went out and pitched in Kerjerima and Judah where. For they called the place Marshall done unto this day, and behold, it was behind Kedjarashim. And they passed thence into Mount Ephraim and came into the house of Micah. So underline that, come into the house of Micah. So here's 600 men coming up there now. Then answered the five men that went uh, to spy out the country of Lickish and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in this house a ephod and a teraphim and graven images and molten images. Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned in thither and came to the house of the young man and Levi, even to the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the uh, five men that went in to spy out the land went up and came thither and took the graven images, and the ephod, and the telephone, and the molten images, and the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the six hundred men that were appointed with weapons of war. All right. And this went into Micah's house and fetched the graven images. I want to line that. So they go into Micah's house and take all his graven images, the ephod, the teraphim, and the molten images. Then said the priest unto him, What do ye? So the priest said, well, we you take them all the gods out of Micah's house for? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace. Don't say nothing. Lay thy hand upon the mouth. All right, put your hand over your mouth. Don't say nothing. And go with us. So underline that. Go with us. So they're saying, we want you to go with us because we're 600 men at the tribe of Dan and they're going to battle to war. And they say, come with us. Now watch it. And be to us. Now, underline it in verse 18. It'll show you something. And be unto us a father and a priest. There it is, that thing of a father and a priest goes all the way back over there uh, several hundred years before uh, the New Testament. It is better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man or that thou be a priest unto a tribe. So underline that. So this man becomes a priest unto the tribe of Dan. And he gives up Micah. And he, he said, man, I got a whole priest, a whole bunch of tribe, a whole tribe here to be a control of. And the family in Israel and the priest heart, underline it, the priest heart was glad. In his heart he said, oh man, I got 600 men. I can, I'll be the priest of all these folks. And they took the ephod and the teraphim and the grieving images and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed and put a little ones and the cattle and the and carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the house near to Micah's house. So that's his neighbors. That's Micah's neighbors. Were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. So they catch up with them. And they cried unto the children of Dan. Now they're talking to this whole 600 men of arm, armed men ready to fight. And they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What ailest thee? They see him coming. They turn around and say, What do you want? That thou comest with 
such a company. He got a few men, but 600 men, he don't have 600 neighbors. Micah may have 20 or 30 against his 600. And he said, ye have taken away, now underline it, my gods which I made, underline it, my gods which I made. He took his idols out there. That's very important because this tribe carries that thing for 600, 700 years. And, and the priest, underline it in verse 24, the priest, and you're gone away, and what have I more? And what is that ye say unto me, what ailest thee? See, what do you mean saying, what ailest thee? I'm mad because you took my gods. Verse 24, and the children of Dan, underline it, there it is again, said unto him, let not thy voice be heard among us. Least anger fall out, run upon thee, and thou lose thy life. Uh, with the life of thy household. Uh, they're saying, uh, you better shut up. We're a, we could just wipe you guys all out in about 10 minutes. So he said, you better leave. You know that? You better just shut up. We got your gods and your priests, but you better leave. Verse 26, and the children of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he said, man, I can't do nothing. They'll kill me. He turned and went back to his house. Underline that. He goes back to his house. He didn't get his gods back. And they took the thing which Micah had made, underline that, had made, and the priest, took his priest, which he had, and came to Lichish unto the people that were quiet and secure and smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. They go up there and just kill all those people. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon and had no business with any man and it was in the valley that layeth at Bethorn, and they built a city and dwelt there, and they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born in Israel, howbeit the name of the city was called Lichish at the first. And the children of Dan set up graven images, underline it, verse 30. And Jotham, the son of Gushim, the son of Meshach, he and his sons were priests unto the tribe of Dan. Now here's what you want to get, verse 30. Now underline it in your Bible, circle it. Until the day of the captivity of the land. So that idol worship of the tribe of Dan is carried on for 700 years, over 700 years, till they go into captivity. And they go into captivity over there in 2 Kings chapter 18. Go into captivity in 2 Kings chapter 18. And... Uh, Somebody give me the uh, turn, you've got a Schofield Bible, turn to 2 Kings chapter 18, and then compare the two dates that are found here in 2 Kings chapter 18. 2 Kings chapter 18, and then compare the two dates, and you'll see how long the tribe of Dan was worshiping idols until they leave into captivity. That's uh, a seven. 16, 713, okay, 713, and what's the date over here in Judges 18, 17 and 18? 14 what? 1406. So you got 1406 and subtract uh, 713 and you come up with, okay, so that's what you have. That's how long they were in idolatry. That's 600, almost 700 years. 700 years, folk, man, that's longer than America's even been here. That's a long time, boy. They, they never did get right. And because they stayed into that idolatry and stayed in it and stayed in it and the tribe of Dan stayed there for 700 years, you went, God said, God, I'm just sick with the tribe of Dan. So the tribe of Dan is left out of the chronology in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. All right. Now you've got several cross references in your Bible about it. But uh, take your Bible and turn to Jeremiah. Turn to Jeremiah. And turn to Jeremiah chapter 17. And let's see some more things about it. Now if you really want to do a study on it, what you should do is see the... Uh, the study of the, the God of Baal, the God of Baal in the Old Testament, and study all that stuff that's connected with the Baalite worship, the God of Baal. Turn to uh, Jeremiah 
chapter, what did I say? The seventh, seventeen. No, I want, I want, I, I want to go to Jeremiah. I'm gonna go a little bit further than that. Uh, I think it's forty-four. No, I think it's forty-four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter forty-four, and let's see some more things about this Jezebel's religion. And she's a Baalite worshiper. You want to study the woman Jezebel, study her religion, and study everything you can in the Old Testament on the God of Baal, Baalite worship. All right, uh, here's something you need to see. Jeremiah 44, Jeremiah 44, pick up verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our mouths. Now, underline verse 17. To burn incense underline that that's a candle that's a candle unto now underline the next four words the queen of heaven you know why you know why they said the queen of heaven she's female deity she's a, a woman that she worships just like the catholics worship mary okay now look at verse 18 in the same passage but since we left off, underline it, the burning of incense, it's a, they like candles. They like thousands and thousands of candles. Since we left off the burning incense to the queen of heaven, there it is again, to depart a drink offering unto her. They worship a female deity. Now verse 19. And when we burned incense, there it is three times. Burn incense, burn incense, burn incense. Then the Protestants should burn candles. The Protestants should not have a candlelight service. That's Catholicism. Verse 19. And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offering unto her, did we make her, underline it, cakes to worship her, underline, worship her, worship her. So they worship Mary. And uh, that's, what is the date in Jeremiah chapter 44? What's the date? In a Schofield Bible, what's the date up in the box? What is it? 587. So 500 years before Christ, they're worshiping a female deity. They call the Queen of Heaven. A female deity. All right. Now, take your Bible and turn back to Revelation chapter 2 now. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And uh, do a study on it in the Old Testament on the, on the God of Baal. If you want to study it and find it out. It's way over there. So they have a priest that called Father. Now that's why you find Jesus when he said in Matthew chapter 23, Call no man upon this earth your Father. He's in reference to that Baalite worship over there in the Old Testament. Uh... Uh, Revelation chapter 2 now. Revelation chapter 2. And pick up verse uh, 21. And it gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her unto a bed, and them that commit adultery with her. So she doesn't go down alone. She takes some folks with her. Unto what? Underline it. Great Tribulation. So you should have Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 in your notes. Great tribulation. So uh, she's thrown in to a bed. No, it's not there, but you want to write it in. Matthew 24, verse 21. Uh, the great tribulation is mentioned. So she goes there and people go there with her. Except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with deaths. And kill them with deaths. Look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Look at verse 8. Revelation chapter 6 verse 8. Uh, I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on it was. Now underline it. Death. There it's a capital D. So he's going to kill her children with death. Capital D. Now there it's a capital D 
When you capitalize a word, what do you do with the word when you capitalize it? Yeah, you make it a man. You make it a person. You make it a person. So death there is connected with a person. All right. Uh, back to Revelation chapter 2 and uh, verse 23. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins of the hearts. The reins and the hearts. Underline the word reins. Now the reins is, is your heart. Your heart and my heart has reins in it. Like a horse has reins on it. You ever ride a horse? It's got, it's got a set of reins on the horse. Not to direct the horse. Then every one of us has something that directs our hearts. We have reins in our hearts that directs our heart going a certain way like this, or going over here, or going over here, or going over there. Ask God to give you the right kind of reins. Because your heart, you know what life is made up of? It's made up of what your heart does. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, I believe it is. So underline the word reins. Ask God to give you the right kind of reins. Uh, and I will give unto every man of you according to your works. So the Lord says, okay, I'm going to reward all those fellows by what they do. All right, you reap what you sow. Verse 24. But unto you I say unto the rest of thy retire, as many as have not this doctrine, this doctrine would be the doctrine of Jezebel in verse 20. So write down in the margin of your Bible, the doctrine of Jezebel. Verse 20, which we went over a little bit, not much, but you need to do a real study on it in the Old Testament. As many as have not this doctrine, of which have not known the depths of Satan, not known the depths of Satan in relationship to Jezebel and her religion, then some folks don't know much about Rome. A lot of Catholics don't know much about her. A lot of Protestants don't know much about her. All right. As I speak, I will put upon you no other burden, but that's which ye have already hold fast till I come. So he's warning them to hold fast till they come, talking about second coming. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, and underline that there in verse 26, unto the end, there it is again, that's tribulation. So write down Matthew chapter 24, in the margin of your Bible, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. That's why you see that thing in the book of Hebrews, until the end. And that to the end of a period of time. All right. To him will I give power over the nations. The, the tribulation saint will, will reign. And he that rules them with a rod of iron, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So uh, Jesus Christ is going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Now write down uh, Revelation chapter uh, 19, verse 15. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and she shall rule them with a rod of iron. So the millennial reign of Christ is what kind of reign? It's a rain with a rod of iron. Boy, it's quite a rain. And the Lord's going to, it's going to be a rain with, with power. Rule with a rod of iron. Boy, that's going to be ruling with a tremendous amount of power. Power. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. In a certain sense, ruling with, what would you think if he said he's going to rule with a rod of iron? What would you have in the picture of your mind when he says that? Folks, what would you have? What would you think? You think would you think it's going to be pretty rough? Rule with a rod of iron. Revelation chapter two. All right. Uh, and as a vessel of a potter shall they break the shivers, even as I receive of my father. And it looks like he, when he comes back too, he's going to destroy the nations and wipe out all the nations and do away with them. Uh, take your Bible and turn to the book of Daniel. Turn to the book of Daniel. And turn to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And notice in Daniel chapter 2, when the Lord returns, 
he's going to wipe out all the nations of this earth except the, the nation of Israel. Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 35. Daniel 2, 35. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold. Those all represent kingdoms. All right. Uh, broken in pieces together and become like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away that no man was found uh, for them. And the stone that smote the image become a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So the stone is Jesus Christ coming back and the mountain is his kingdom. All right, look again at verse 44. Daniel's image in Daniel chapter 2 when that stone falls down and hits the feet and destroys the whole image. Look at verse 44. And in the days of those kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom that's the millennial kingdom of Christ, which shall never be destroyed. So the millennial kingdom is actually an internal kingdom. And the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall be broken in pieces and consumed. All these kingdoms, so all the kingdoms in the past are destroyed, and it shall stand forever. Christ's kingdom will stand forever. All right, Revelation chapter uh, 2 now. And pick up uh, verse 28. And I will give him the morning star. Underline that, morning star. Now, folks, you should know by now, you should know who the morning star is. Jesus Christ is the morning star. So you want to, want to write down two cross references for the morning star. Write down, uh, first of all, uh, Revelation uh Chapter, uh, <clears throat> well, where am I at? Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Let's write that down verse. The morning star. Revelation 22, 16. You ought to study the morning star. The morning star actually is the planet Venus. Is the planet Venus. If you look over, uh, where's it at now, Dennis? You know where it's at? You, you, you go all night and go up sometimes early in the morning and see this planet Venus is the only star that's shining. Now you get up early in the morning about what time, Dennis? I mean, sometimes it'll be standing out there and be the only star out there and boy, it'll be so bright and all the other stars will disappear. And you can't see any other star but the star, but the planet Venus, and it's a star be standing right there out like that. That's a type of Christ. That's a type of Christ. Get up early in the morning and look out and see that star. And you know why the Lord did that? The Lord is saying, I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. So every morning when you get up and look over there, now sometimes it's not there. Sometimes it's over here. Sometimes the planet Venus is over here. But I, how, how long does it stay over there? Anybody know? I'll do a study on it. See how long that the planet Venus stays in the eastern sky, up in the eastern sky. And it's designed for you and me to get our heart on Jesus Christ and that he's coming back. He's coming back. Now look at uh, the cross-reference. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. It's been a long time since I preached on the bright and morning star. And I, Jesus have sent my angel to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. The bright and morning star, that's Venus, right at the margin of the Bible. It's the planet Venus. All right. Uh, turn to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Second uh, Peter uh, 1 19 I have also a more sure word of prophecy we have also a more sure word of prophecy where you do well that you take heed as unto a light to shineth in the dark place until underline the word 
until the day dawn. That's the second coming of Christ. Uh, and the day star arise in your heart. So, brother, you and I ought to have something in our hearts that you're saying, the Lord's coming back, the Lord's coming back, the Lord's coming back. The right emphasis for a Christian is to be looking and loving for Jesus Christ to come back. He's a bright and morning star in our hearts. In our hearts. All right, back to Revelation now. Revelation. And so if you have the right attitude towards the second coming of Christ, you'll have the right attitude and the right emphasis that ought to be. Verse 19 now. He that hath an ear, let him hear with the Spirit, underline a capital S, so it's the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit saith unto the church arms. And of course that shows you that the tribulation saint has the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is here on the earth, during the tribulation. Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. Seven spirits of God. Write down Isaiah chapter 11. Verse 1 and 2. He that hath the seven spirits of God. And to the angel of the church of Sardis. These things saith he. So Christ is talking that hath the seven spirits of God. Now write it down this way. Seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. They're not seven different spirits. It's actually seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Now turn to Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, and look at verse 6, Revelation 5, 6. Now turn to the verse, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Folks, you know who the lamb is, don't you? The lamb is Jesus Christ. As it had been slain. So it's a, it's, he there appears like he's already been crucified. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are, underline it in verse 6, which are the seven spirits of God. There it is again. Now watch what it says. Sent forth, sent forth unto all the earth. Now, why are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all earth? Because the Holy Spirit is in the tribulation. That seven spirits of God are the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit in Christ sent to all the earth. They're in the tribulation saint. That's why it tells the tribulation saint to hear with the Spirit. All right. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 1 uh, and the seven uh, stars, I know, so it's Christ is talking, I know thy works. And yes, he does. He knows our works. He knows the tribulation's works. He knows everybody's works, good or bad. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. Now, there's some folks that uh, everybody thinks are, they're, they're a great, wonderful, magnificent Living church. But the Lord says you're dead. Deader than a mackerel. So write it down in the margin of your Bible. Some folks deceive themselves. Some folks deceive themselves. They think they're a great living example and they're deader than a mackerel. Don't let that be you. And are dead. Don't be dead. And that's spiritual dead. That's not. Those folks are alive walking around. They're just spiritually dead. Be watchful. He tells them to watch and strengthen the things which remain. And he says, okay, you still got some things that are there. Strengthen them. That are ready to die. And line that in verse 2. That are ready to die. So there's some things that are about ready to die, but they're not completely dead. But they're, about, they're fixing on dying. They're, fixed, they're just about ready to die. So he says, don't, don't be completely dead. Have some life in you that are ready to die. 
for I have not found thy works perfect before God. You know, he's going to criticize him. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and held fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee as a thief, underline that, as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I cometh unto thee. So he's warning somebody in the tribulation that the, he's going to come forth as a thief, and that is the tribulation rapture of the tribulation saints. Now write this down. Don't confuse the rapture of the church age saint with the rapture of the tribulation saint. Those are two different raptures. They're not the same. And here in, in Revelation, when he says, uh, come as a thief, he's talking about the advent of the tribulation saint, second advent. Not talking about the rapture. All right. Uh, verse, and he tells them to watch. Thou hast a few names uh, in the sawdust which have not defiled their garments. Underline that. Not defiled their garments. And they see of a tribulation saint. They're worthy. For he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white remnant. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Okay. So you want to write down the cross reference now. And there's, there's several of them. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter uh, 13. Revelation chapter 13. And uh, pick up verse 8. So he said, Will not blot out his name out of the book of life if he overcomes. If he doesn't overcome, he takes the mark. And his name's blotted out. Now, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. Revelation 13, 8. And it says, And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him, underline it, whose name are not written in the book of life from the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So who is it in verse 8? All that dwell on the earth who worship him, underline that, worship the Antichrist. So if a man worships the Antichrist and takes the mark, his name's not in the book of life. His name is not in that. Yeah, the worshipers of the Antichrist don't have their names in. Now turn to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 and pick up verse 15. So that's why you see the book of life over here in the great white throne judgment. Because the tribulation saint, he can't go to the judgment seat of Christ. It's up in heaven, taking place, while the tribulation saint is going through down on earth. He doesn't go to the judgment seat of Christ. He goes to the white throne judgment. So, Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, it says in verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the tribulation saint overcomes the mark of the beast. So his name's in the book of life. Therefore, the book of life is there at the great white throne judgment. Now, take your Bible and turn also back to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, and watch the great white throne judgment again. Revelation chapter 11. And Revelation chapter 11, uh, pick, up, uh, pick up verse 17. Revelation eleven seventeen. Say, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, which was, and which is to come, because thou has taken of thee the great power and, now underline the last two words in verse 17, and what? Hast, H-A-S-T, hast what? What's that last word in verse 17? Reign. The millennium is over. The millennium is over. Write it in the margin of your Bible. The millennium is over. So what follows the millennium? The great white throne judgment. Now verse 18. And the nations were angry, and the wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged. That's Revelation chapter 20. We just read it. Revelation chapter 20, 8 through 15. 
that they should be judged, and that they should give, now watch it, give rewards unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints. He's going to reward them. He's going to reward the tribulation saints. And them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroyed the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was a scene in the temple, the Ark of the Testament. But verse 17 and 18 shows you that there's saints, saints at the white throne judgment. Saints at the white throne judgment. A lot of folks say, well, there isn't any saints there. That's all the unsaved people coming up at the last judgment. No, the millennial saints are judged at the white throne judgment, and the tribulation saints are judged at the white throne judgment. That's why it says, give rewards, give rewards unto the serpents of prophets and unto the saints of them that fear thy name. All right, back to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, and let's find a quitting place. Revelation chapter 3, and let's quit in verse, we'll have to pick verse 5 up later again. And he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white remnant, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. All right, any questions? We'll go over that again next Wednesday. Any questions about the rest, about Revelation? All right, prayer requests. Okay, what else do you need to remember in prayer? All right. Remember her in prayer. And now if your children are in a coma, you should be going through some real heart searching things. To be in prayer for. Okay, what else do you need to remember in prayer? Pray the Lord to give us some good service this Sunday. And let's uh, not forget to pray for our missionaries. And I have a personal prayer for. Uh, Somebody in the church, I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to mention your name, but I want you to pray that God would give this particular individual some grace and some mercy. Okay, what else do you need to remember in prayer? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray tonight you'll bless our prayer meeting. I pray you'll bless your people and encourage them, Father, and strengthen them, make them strong. The Lord, help them to be fighting the good fight of faith. And Lord, help them to be doing something for you when the trumpet sounds. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen.